Saul Invictus, a legendary Ultramarines captain of the first company of the chapter no less. And in this video, I am going to show you how to build and paint him. Over the last eight months, I have been building up the retro army of my dreams, a second edition Ultramarines force, like the kind you would see in the old codexes and White Dwarf magazine. I have over 2,000 points so far, in old currency of course, and one aim has been to have one of every special character from the second edition codex. So far I have Marnius Kalgar and Tigurius. These were the only official models at the time. In fact, Tigurius was not released until after the Codex was. If you wanted to field the other characters, you had to build them yourselves. So that's my plan for Saul Invictus. During the days of 3rd edition, GW featured a picture of Captain Invictus in their chapter approved supplement. He's based on the Metal Terminator Captain from the time and it's this model I intend to copy. An eBay purchase got me the base model. He didn't have the power sword of the original, but it didn't matter, since the good captain has a power fist. In the stripper he goes. I decided not to keep the banner pole. I guess I could come back and add it later. Once the paint was removed, I gathered the other parts I needed. His ranged weapon is a plasma blaster, which I decided to model with two plasma pistols glued together. For the power fist, I went with a plastic bit. I think it's from the Mark III armor sprue. The first challenge was to cut off the stone bolter from the metal arm. And this brings us to the main dilemma. Converting with metal parts is a nightmare. It's why I didn't use a metal power fist. I didn't want to slice up a perfectly good arm, so I went with the casting option. You can see more details on that in another video. The footage you see here did not actually yield the arm I ended up using. The problem was, I didn't line up the two parts of the mould correctly. The one I used was the third attempt. At least cutting milliput is simpler than cutting metal. Back to the power fist. I drilled holes into the plastic hoping it would slide onto the existing arm stump, but no such luck. In the end, I had to saw that stump off, which I wanted to avoid but needs must. I used some excess milliput from before and a paper clip to pin the arm to the torso. Unfortunately, I didn't record the building of the right arm, but you can see the final product here. Now on to the painting. To make the blue its brightest, I primed the captain white with Halford's white primer. Then I applied three thin coats of Calador Sky. Next were the highlights, which I prefer to get done before any other details, since the blue paint is still on my wet palette. The first pass of highlights is a 50-50 mix of Calador Sky and Loth and Blue. The second pass is just pure Loth and Blue which I try to keep as sharp as possible with my finest detail brush. Now 
Before any more details are added, I went back over all the other areas with white paint. The next step is to use Reichlin Flesh Shade on the Crux Terminatus, Purity Seals, Skulls and anything else I want to be a bone colour. I generally add a drop of water to the shade before painting it on, and when that layer is dry, I repeat the process once more. I find this shade's nicer than just slopping it on in one go. I use the old paint firm in brown as a base layer for areas I want to look goldish. I have had this paint for donkey's years. It's gloopy, but it still works well when thinned down. You'll notice his tabard is also blue in these shots. I didn't keep this in the end, opting for dark sand instead. I used a couple of thin layers of this, then shaded with Reichland Flesh Shade. While that was drying, I used Dark Vermilion for the red, and applied this to the Plasma Blaster and the wax portion of the Purity Seals. I then went back to the tabard, and I painted the raised areas dark sand again. And finally, I went for the white highlight on the most raised parts. And while the white was on my brush, I used a very thin layer to glaze the raised portion of the skulls and crux terminatus. Warpstone glow was used for the plasma coils of his weapon. It was the colour GW appeared to have used for their model, even if it does remind me of Christmas. Off camera, I used Army Painter's Barbarian Flesh for the face, and then I shaded it with Reichland Flesh Shade. The areas I painted Vermin Brown got a wash of Flesh Shade, and when that had dried, I used Avalanche Sunset and all but the deepest recesses, followed by an edge highlight of Avalanche Sunset mixed with Dark Sand. I used Barbarian Flesh again on the raised areas, and a mix of white and flesh for the extreme highlights. I also painted the eyes off camera. Painting eyes is tough. I don't yet have the skills to paint the eyes and film myself painting the eyes at the same time. All the metallic areas got a coat of army paint of good metal, and then a wash of null oil. If you have followed my community posts, you will have seen that I gave in to peer pressure and bought some micro sol and micro set for the decals. These are liquid talent, and they really do improve decal work. Of course, after the decal has set and dried, I still use gloss varnish and then matte varnish to give the most seamless finish. And here he is. The Regent of Ultramar, the martyr for the Imperium himself, who gave his life to hold back High Fleet Behemoth until Marnius Kalgar and the rest of the chapter could achieve victory. He has had some interesting rules in second, including allowing all Terminators in his bodyguard to have a Wargear card each. I look forward to using him in battle sometime, especially against the Tyranid Menace. And with that, I had better go and paint some more minis. Take care, and thanks for watching.